Yeah, my name is Jerry Flynn. Um, I grew up on the Haygate Estate, the Elephant and Castle, uh, which is now sadly demolished, at least I think sadly. And I began campaigning against the demolition of the Haygate Estate, along with other people from the estate, got ourselves together in a group called the Elephant Amenity Network. And out of that, we formed the 35% campaign, which campaigns for 35% affordable housing, which is the sort of baseline requirement of uh, the local authority, Southwark Council, for the amount of affordable housing there should be in any new developments. Despite being the baseline requirement, they weren't getting it, or at least they weren't getting it 10 years ago when we, over 10 years ago, 2008, when we began campaigning. To greater or lesser extent, regeneration is contested, but in some areas it's m much less than in others. I think Southwark is one of the areas where it is most contested, simply probably because, first of all, we have a very high number of social rented homes, very not high number of council houses, uh, getting on for 40,000, second largest in the country, I understand. And much of the site of the regeneration involved knocking down these council houses, which uh, you know doesn't please people living in them, uh, whether they're renting them or whether they've bought them. Um, and that has been going on uh, for the last 20 years, or the process has been going on for the last 20 years. It kicked off really in about 1999-2000 with the Haygate Estate and the Aylesbury Estate uh, just off the Elephant Castle and down the Walworth Road. And together they amounted to 4,000 council homes that were being demolished, which is 10% uh, of Southwark's housing stock. And you can add to that the Wood Dean Estate in Peckham, the Elmington Estate at Camberwell, and yeah, I lumped them all in together and uh, got nearly 5,000 council homes that were, uh, were demolished and um, not replaced, certainly not replaced as council housing, and by and large, not replaced as social rented housing either, social rented housing being the alternative um, to council housing, the nearest alternative, uh, the only difference being that it's let by um, housing association rather than a local authority. The story of regeneration in Southwark up until now, I'm afraid, has been largely one of knocking down council estates and not replacing them, or replacing them, I should say, with uh, developments that are largely private developments built by private developers uh, for their profit, not for local need. We looked a couple of years ago at 25 major schemes, mainly in the north of the borough, and they delivered about 12,000 units and out of that 12,000 units, only 456 were social rented. They didn't all involve demolitions. That pair of figures, uh, 12,000 against 456, gives you some idea of, uh, it's pretty representative of what's been happening in the borough. We got a lot of opportunity, we got three opportunity areas in Southwark, and an opportunity area is uh, designated by the, uh, by the mayor, by the mayor of London, as a place where there will be denser development opportunity area but the opportunity is, is really for developers to build more rather than for us to get you know, better affordable housing so we have one at the elephant and castle and that's got a target of about four thousand homes we have one at canada water and that's got a target of six thousand homes and the biggest one the latest one down the old kent road and i think uh, already about eight thousand units have been consented since 2015 there so a large part of the borough is under a, some sort of regeneration scheme, mainly in the north coming downwards. Our posher bits, Dulwich, yeah, they're, they're left in peace, but the rest of us, we're, we're bang in the middle of, uh, of a very large-scale regeneration. And that goes for whether you're a council tenant or a leaseholder or a private renter. This has been going on now, as I say, for about two decades. The idea of regeneration powered by local government, with local government taking the initiative by knocking down its own houses and, and allowing private developers to build. 
I wouldn't like to say whatever they like, but by and large, whatever they like is, is, isn't a new one now. It's sort of middle-aged, if you like, and we're beginning to see the results. And one of the consequences of that, of people seeing the results, and I have to say, I think of our campaign work and campaign work of other groups, is that people are, I think people are, I wouldn't like to say rebelling, I think that'd be going too far, but certainly there is, a, there is more skepticism and a good deal more resistance to, uh, to regeneration. At the moment in Southwark, we have quite a quite a backlash against um, against the kind of regeneration that's called infill, which is looking at council estates for small plots, which are taken up by other amenities such as uh, pram sheds or ball courts or green space, and trying to squeeze in a little bit more uh, social rented housing. This is part and parcel of Southwark Council's attempt, reaction, I think, to or, or response to the reaction to regeneration. It came up in 2015, I think it was, with the idea, we're going to build 11,000 council homes, but we're going to do it in 30 years. It's quite a long time. We're not going to get in them until 20, 2043. And this infill is part of this uh, ambition to build 11,000 council homes. I think where we are at the moment is a situation where we sort of two decades into large scale regeneration. It's got a bad reputation amongst the many people living in Southwark who depend upon particularly social rented housing for, for, for good accommodation. The local authority has reacted by saying, right, we'll build 11,000 council homes. Nowhere near enough, but anyway. And a proportion of these, about 10%, I think it's about 1,300, they want to build on these infill schemes. And it's encountering a lot of resistance. How this is going to play out, I'm not quite sure. Because in some senses, you might say, well, you know, you want council housing, and yet you're objecting to council housing. Um, but at the same time, I think people will see it differently. What they see is huge areas of land that have been ceded to private developers. They know all about the Haygate. They know all about the Aylesbury. And they're sort of saying, well, you know, why should I lose this little bit of green space? However, I'm prepossessing it might look like that's outside my front door so that you can squeeze in a half a dozen or a dozen social rented units when you're giving up Canada water, you know, huge, I think, about 50 football pitches or something to, to a private developer.